into submission I surrender this day into the chamber be free Holy Spirit speak to me gently as I close the door heaven the lover let thy presence cover so I never unending is all I long for into the chamber be free Holy Spirit thank you thank you all long way Heavenly lover, let the presence come. So kindness unending is all I long for. Into the chambers, free Holy Spirit. Speak through me gently as I close the door. Heavenly lover, let thy presence cover. So kind of unending is all I long for. So kind of unending is all I long for. He is more than enough, more than enough. He is El Shaddai, He's the God of plenty. He's the all-sufficient one, God Almighty. He is more than enough. He is more than enough. More than enough. He is El Shaddai, the God of plenty. He's the all sufficient one. God Almighty, He is more than enough. It's more than enough. He is more than enough. More than enough. He is the shadow, the goal of plenty. The all-sufficient one, God Almighty, He is more than enough. Go free in the name of Jesus. Behold, in the name of the Lord, act on His word. Let your voice confirm that it is done. In the name of the Lord, go free in the name of Jesus. Behold, in the name of the Lord, act on His word, and let your voice confirm that it is done in the name of the Lord. My Lord is wonderful, in counsel is wonderful. Excellent in working, he's excellent. 
Mighty to deliver, He's mighty. Glory to God forevermore. My God is wonderful, and counsel in wonderful, excellent in walking, your excellent. Mighty to deliver, He's mighty. Glory to God forevermore. Tell them, Lord, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. Excellent. Excellent in walking, you're excellent. You're mighty to deliver, you're mighty. Glory to God forevermore. Lord, you're wonderful, in counsel you're wonderful. Excellent in walking, you're excellent. Mighty to deliver, your mighty glory to God forevermore. You're more than enough, for you are more than enough. You're more than enough. You're El Shaddai, the God. Of plenty, the all sufficient one, God Almighty, you are more than enough. You are more than enough, more than enough. You are El Shaddai. The God, plenty, the all-sufficient one, God Almighty, ye are more than enough. You are more than enough. You more than enough. You are more than enough. Hallelujah. Just raise your hands up. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. So pray bless God. I will praise him in everything. Thank him. For all he has done, I will find the good fight till faith turn to sign. I will run till the race is run. I will praise him in everything. Thank Him for all He has done. I will find the good fight unto faith, turn to sign. I will run till the race is run. I 
ever praise him in everything. Thank him for all he has done. I will fight the good fight until faith turn to sight. I will run to the race is run. Precious name, oh, how sweet, hope of earth is the joy of heaven. Precious name, oh, how sweet, hope of earth. Joy of heaven, gracious name, oh, how sweet, hope of earth, joy of heaven, gracious name, oh, how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Let's sing it again. Gracious name, all oh, how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Gracious name, all oh, how sweet. Hope of earth, joy, oh. One more time, precious name, precious name. Oh, how sweet. Hope of earth is the joy of heaven. Precious name. Oh, how sweet, hope of earth, joy, oh. has borne our sicknesses, removed them far, far away. He didn't bear up all of mine iniquities, sin and sickness passed from me to Christ. The Word is working mightily in me. The Word is working mightily in me. No matter what the circumstance that I feel not see, the Word is working mightily in me. The Word is working. The Word is working mightily in me. The Word is working mightily in me. No matter where the circumstances, what I feel nor see, the word is working mightily in me. Come on, let's sing it together. The word is working mightily in me. The word is working mightily in me. No matter where the circumstances, what I feel nor see. The word is working mightily in me. Let's sing it again. 
the word is working mightily in me word is working mightily in me no matter where the circumstance that i feel not see the word is working mightily in me i like the word based songs amen amen hey, isn't that wonderful to learn those little songs that we grew up in when we were newly born again those songs were just the scriptures that we put in song. What? This is a special one. You want to hear one more? Almighty Father, El Shaddai, you poured your life into me. Nourishment provider, strength giver, satisfier. You are such a good God to me. Almighty Father, El Shaddai, you poured your life into me. Nourishment provider, strength giver, satisfier. You such a good God to me. You made me fruitful, El Shaddai. Blessed me so exceedingly. You've kept your promises, oh Father. You've been a good God to me. Almighty Father, El Shaddai, you poured your life into me. Nourishment provider, strength giver, satisfier. You've been a good God to me. Almighty Father, El Shaddai, you've poured your life into me. Nourishment provider, strength giver, satisfier. You've been a good God to me. Everybody say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say I am making plans to succeed. Say I am making plans to succeed every day. Say amen. Amen. I can teach you a lot of the songs. Amen. You're such a good God to me. Is he a good God to you? Amen. Everybody dance now. Oh, oh. ain't the Holy Ghost now. Oh, oh. everybody praise the one, the one, the one you love the most. Everybody dance now, oh, oh, in the Holy Ghost now, oh, oh, everybody praise the one, the one, the one you love the most. I think that was the wake-up sign. <laughs> okay, welcome to the Embassy, Wisdom Wednesday. Are you ready? I want to welcome all of you that are watching. Uh, we have everybody here just folded over in excitement. We want to welcome all of you, and it's going to be a great evening. It's good to see you guys tonight, and I just want to bring as a point of uh, inviting everybody. Um, we are back on Sunday again, and we're going to be doing it at ten thirty this Sunday. We open up, and we're getting started back to the swing of things. 
And I want to welcome everybody that is watching us. Everybody say, give me understanding and I will live. Say, give me understanding and I will live. Last week we were talking about um, commonwealth. And I want to segue a little bit today and we go back to the other topic we had, which is understanding. Everybody say understanding. Everybody say understanding. Now, if you read the scripture, if you read, um, do we have your, uh, we have your microphone today? Let's get going. Hallelujah. Everybody say, give me understanding and I will live. Say, give me understanding and I will live. The Bible declares that a man of understanding is, a, is of an excellent spirit. Is of an excellent spirit. Everybody say, excellent spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 declares that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. And I stated to you the other time that understanding is the missing element for most people's lives. Understanding. Everybody say understanding. Say understanding. Hallelujah. So I realize this. Not a lot of people have understanding. So a lot of people have wisdom, but they lack understanding. Is that correct? You see, understanding is what opens up the capacity of what God has put in you. Understanding is what opens the capacity. You see, it's one thing to have a capacity. Another thing is to, is to maximize the capacity. Are you with me? So a lot of times people say, well, I have wisdom. The Bible says, get wisdom and get understanding. Now, if wisdom is the principal thing, Understanding is what brings the principal things into fruition. If it's the main thing and the principal thing, then there is something you have to follow concerning that. Is that correct? Proverbs chapter 4, verses 5 to 7. Proverbs chapter 4. It says, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Now the Bible says, with all your getting... That means you have wisdom, you have anointing, you have everything. What makes all of your getting tangible? You see, you have all this wisdom. How can you translate wisdom into productive things? You have this knowledge. A person goes to the university, studies for years, gets a lot of knowledge, and then it's still broke. They have a lot of knowledge. And they can speak a lot of wise things. But it does not translate into something tangible. How can you have all of the degrees and still cannot feed yourself? That means there is something missing. You're not able to translate the knowledge and the wisdom into tangible things that can sustain you. It takes understanding. Everybody say understanding. When you seek understanding, when you have understanding, you begin to produce all that you have collected. The Bible says get wisdom. Get wisdom. Everybody say get wisdom. The Bible says get wisdom and with all the things you're going to ever get, get understanding. So, 
Now, if I have a little wisdom with a lot of understanding, I can outperform a person with a lot of wisdom with no understanding. Because understanding, write this down, is the amplifier of wisdom. I will say it again. Somebody should write it online also. Understanding is what amplifies wisdom. In other words, it makes wisdom to stand out. So understanding translates the wisdom into uh, uh, um, uh, what they call a design. It translates the wisdom into a building. It translates the wisdom into tangible things. It makes it that way you cannot deny that wisdom is there. Understanding is the key. Everybody say understanding. Say understanding. The biggest thing that is lacking in the body of Christ in the world today is people with understanding. Understanding. Because you talk to people and you're wondering, do you have understanding? Because you're looking at them and almost a simple thought, a simple idea. I wanted to share something because... You were saying that one of the main things is that people lack understanding. And I was on Facebook, and there was this community chat, like, for believers. And uh, someone left a question saying, if you could ask God one question, what would it be? And this girl's question was that, that I could be in God's kingdom with him. <laughs> yeah. Now, pay attention to this now. They want to ask God whether they can be in his kingdom. If they had understanding, they would already know they are in the kingdom. But you see, a lot of believers have no understanding. And so, they're asking God for what they already have. And then, what are you doing? Asking God to do what they are supposed to do. Are you with me? And that has been the problem. That has been the problem. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2 verse 2. Read it. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Incline your ear to wisdom and apply. You see, wisdom is leaning in. And then understanding is bringing forth. You apply application, application of the wisdom you've received. So, why is it that we have a lot of people that sound wise but can't produce? The proof of what you know is what you produce. Don't tell me you're smart and you can produce smart things. It doesn't work that way. Are you with me? The Bible declares, apply your heart to understanding. And let's keep reading. Go to verse 11. Discretion shall preserve thee. Okay, go for, to verse 10. Let's read in context so we can get the flow. Ten. Verse 10. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Pay attention to the progression. When wisdom enters your heart, and knowledge what? Is pleasant unto thy soul. And that means you are excited about learning. This, why do we read the word of God? Why do we come on a, on a Wednesday night to... To study the word of God. This is the author of life giving you the, the manual for living successfully. So he's telling you how. I mean you can be a Christian. You can love Jesus. But if you lack understanding Satan is going to defeat you. It's not where you're born again. It's where you have understanding. Why is it that a lot of believers are struggling? The Holy Ghost was not left on earth to make you struggle. The Holy Ghost was left on earth to put you over the battle line. 
you're on victory lane now. That's the reason for the Holy Spirit. Why would God put so much power for you to fight the devil? No, for you to overwhelm the enemy and put him in his place. That's why you have the Holy Ghost. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power. He went about doing good. Healing all that was oppressed by the devil. He was setting the captives free. By the power of the Holy Ghost. So why would he put the Holy Ghost in you and see you be defeated? Can I give you the answer? Lack of understanding. That's why people with the Holy Ghost are still praying for power. Oh Lord, send the power. Send. What do you think you receive when the Holy Ghost came? You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes. But because you lack understanding, you do not apply your heart. You apply oil into a car. You apply. That means it in good. understanding requires an action to prove it. If you say you understand, then show me. Don't tell me you understand. Without showing me. And which is the key to success? Understanding. Everybody say understanding. Now keep reading it. Verse 10. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee. Stop. If only everybody in the world can hear this tonight, game over for every problem. It is amazing how the word of God is the nugget for your success and few people pursue it. Pay attention. I want you to read verse 10 again before we get to 11. Read it again. When wisdom entereth into thy When wisdom mm -hmm. enters into your thine heart your heart and knowledge is pleasant and knowledge you have a desire a longing. It's pleasant. That means you like it. It's pleasure to you. Now, some people don't even have step one, wisdom. Because if you have wisdom, the next thing that will happen is a hunger to know. Because you want to read now. You want to watch. You want to see. Because you know something. Because wisdom has opened the door to you. And now knowledge is pleasurable to you. You said, I want to learn. I, want to I don't want to miss anything. All of a sudden, you're excited about learning something new. You can't wait to hang out to hear something new. And then, read the next line. Discretion shall preserve thee. Then, this is the area a lot of people miss. Discretion. Everybody's discretion. Discretion. Everybody's a discretion. See, the problem is with most people is the lack of discretion. A discreet person knows timing and opportunity. When to say or not to say. The opportunity to move and to possess. But a man that lacks discretion talks all the time or wants to attack all the time, does not know the right moment. Uh, 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 a person in the military that does not use discretion is dead before the start. Can you imagine the enemy shooting? You don't use discretion, you just jump up. I did there, you're dead. A man of discretion knows how to keep things that are valuable to others. In other words, somebody exposes you to their inner sanctum. A man of discretion keeps that trust. A person that lacks discretion talks about that inner sanctum that you've been allowed to come into. That's why people that are flippant never get to control things. Let me explain to you. If you're a keeper of secrets to other people, you can rule the world. What am I saying? If you can protect confidence, if people can trust you, in other words, if people can trust you to protect what is valuable to them, instead of you going to tell other people what is valuable to them, that means somebody has an idea and comes to you to share that idea, you don't go and tell everybody else. They came to you trusting that you can keep that idea. 
discreetly, not for you to send the idea they just made a discovery of to everybody, and that idea now is no longer something that can benefit from. A discreet person would always be preserved. Read it again. Discretion shall preserve thee. Discretion. A person that is discreet does not get killed. Because I said, oh, this one is family. I let them in. They know how to keep secret. They protect. Does that make sense? People that don't understand discretion, they talk about everybody's business everywhere. It's, you are not Grand Central Station. You're not AT&T. You know the telephone exchange. A discreet person knows what is valuable to people and knows how to protect it. If that is protected, the one that you're protecting what is valuable to them will come and preserve you. They will keep you because they know you protect them. Nobody keeps a person that is trying to kill them. Discretion will preserve you. The reason why people are not being preserved in a lot of places, check it out, they're not discreet enough. They're too flippant. They talk about everybody's business all the time. Because you heard a thing does not mean the other person that was not invited into the circle deserves to hear it too. Can I say that again? See, the gospel is for everyone. But there are certain things that are not for everyone. Gospel is free. But when it comes to understanding, it comes to things that are important, that are precious to people. And they talk to you about it is because they trust the hearer to be discreet. It's not your place to go and tell everybody about the business. The moment, the moment you do that, you've destroyed their trust. They will never trust you with one cent anymore. They will, they will just tolerate you. They will not celebrate you. After a while, they kick you out. Because they said, this one cannot be trusted. This one's like a snake. A man that is discreet, a woman that is discreet, knows how to protect everybody. And because you're protected for others, others will back you up. Can somebody say amen? This is called wisdom. This is called wisdom. And I've heard some people say, well, we have to be transparent. Now, I, let me deal with that too. You can be transparent, but not be transparent with other people's confidence. It's not your place. That means the day you begin to take somebody else's conf what they have confided in you in, and say you want to be transparent, is the day they will stop having confidence in you. Now, supposing, let me give another scenario. Somebody comes and is saying something about somebody else. They have just broken that rule too. Why are you telling me about that person? If you're going to talk to me, talk to me about you, not about others. Does that make sense? That way, there's no third person talk when we are together. We talk about us and not about other people. That's discretion. Can somebody say amen? Is this helping you? Keep reading. Understanding shall keep thee. Understanding shall keep thee. Keep going. To deliver the man, uh, to, deliver, to deliver from the way of the evil man. Hear this. Understanding shall do what? He shall keep thee. Understanding will keep you. That means, now, discretion will preserve. Think about preservation. It will last a long time. Understanding will keep you from, being, from making a mistake. Keep reading. To deliver you from the way of, of the evil man. To deliver you from the way of the evil man. The evil man. How many times have we not kept this thing and we've gotten into a lot of trouble? Are you with me? Are you with me? Hallelujah. Say so wisdom will keep me. Say so understanding will keep me. 
So discretion will keep me. That's why the Bible says this. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Let's go to verse beginning of verse 5. Go ahead. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. That means they are different kinds of understanding. That's why you have a problem sometimes talking to some people because their understanding is too shallow. Have you ever been in a place where you're trying to explain to them why this is correct and they're arguing with you? Oh, he's a bad man. What is that? Why water is wet? <laughs> well, I've heard some things. I wouldn't say it. But it goes like this. I'm just kidding. You say, I wouldn't say it, then you say it. <laughs> I know, right? Where are we? What scripture? Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. That's the key. In all your ways acknowledge him. Now, you know what it means. To acknowledge means to accept the knowledge of him. Accept his knowledge of you. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge. Accept the knowledge. Acknowledging. To, for me to acknowledge you is to accept what you present to me. I want to acknowledge your presence. Uh, you are, you're presenting yourself to me. So I acknowledge you. I accept that knowledge that you're presenting yourself to me. Does that make sense? So in all your ways, acknowledge him. In other words, acknowledge his wisdom, his understanding. Bring, accept his knowledge into you. And then, when you accept his knowledge, he just directs you where you're supposed to go and you avoid all the issues. He will direct your path. He didn't say you will direct your path. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Hallelujah. Now, there is something higher. Have you ever noticed a lot of Christians, I'm moving around a little bit now. Have you ever noticed a lot of Christians, they think that the ultimate is heaven. Am I correct? They will tell you things like, Is the place I want to go to when I die. Listen to me. Heaven is not the highest place. Let me, can I teach you tonight? Everybody say understanding. Listen, heaven was made. Let me explain to you how God works. If God made heaven, he can make another one. Am I correct? Am I correct? Now, God made many heavens. The heavens, you've heard that from the scripture. The heavenly places. In other words, God can decide to make a new heaven. So heaven is not the ultimate See, a man that lacks understanding will not get this. Because all they have been promised is heaven. And here comes Apostle Charles messing up the deal. Am I right? They will say to you, oh, well, what are you talking about? I mean, a heaven. Oh, are you sure if you die today, you go to heaven? There's a heaven to gain. That's, I like all of these things. Listen to me. Heaven is here. Something made heaven. What made heaven? Whatever made heaven is higher than heaven. Can I give you what made heaven? The Bible says by wit wisdom God made heaven. So wisdom is greater than heaven. If you have wisdom, you can operate heaven on earth. Am I right? Am 
Am I right? So by wisdom, he made the heavens. Are you with me? I know the biggest thing I see in the church today is a lot of time people tell you things like, well, man of God, you know this. And then they get mad because they lack understanding. And they say, but you, yeah, that's false doctrine. No, read the Bible for yourself. Wisdom is greater if wisdom made heaven. By wisdom, God made the heavens. Are you with me? Should I read some more? Should I read some more? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 18 and 19. Let's read it. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Talking about wisdom. Keep going. The Lord, by wisdom, hath founded the earth. By understanding, hath he established the heavens. Okay, so those that are mad at me because you lack understanding, I hope you got it. That's the Bible. It's not Dr. Charles and Ethan's vision. That's Ramsey's Bible. He read it. So if you have any issues, take it up with him at headquarters. <laughs> Is that what the Bible says? Read it again. It's verse 19. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. Stop. By wisdom, he has founded the earth. And the Bible says... Also, by understanding, he has what? Established the heavens. So, now you have wisdom, and there's something greater than wisdom. It's called understanding. Are you with me? Are you catching on? So, you have heaven, you have wisdom, and then you have understanding. So, heaven can be created again. Earth, a new earth can be created again. By wisdom, he founded the earth. So if I have wisdom, I can create another earth. It's like saying, I have the raw material to create earth. Does that make sense? If you have the raw material to create something, all you need is the understanding to do it. Are you with me? Are you with me? Hallelujah. You see, most people don't understand. So what happens is this. Why would Jesus come and start operating like this? The Bible says, and he grew in wisdom. He grew in wisdom. Now, if you grow in wisdom, you are supposed to create. He grew in wisdom. You're supposed to grow in wisdom. But then when understanding comes, wisdom is amplified, is magnified, is manifested. Understanding is what you need to establish things. Can somebody say amen? Are you catching on to this? Hallelujah. If the church can understand this, we'll stop praying some crazy prayers we pray. Apply your heart to understand it. Let's go to the next verse. By knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. By knowledge. Read it again. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up. The depths are broken up. Do you know what people pray about today? They pray about everything else but what really can solve their problem. Have you ever seen somebody come and say, give me money? No, I give you wisdom. You get all the money you can ever want. If you have understanding, you produce everything. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? Do you know God doesn't give you money? He gives you his word. You pray. He tells you, go to the right, go to the left, go and find the fish. The word is what directs you to finding what you're looking for. Can I say that one more time? You want something from God? Follow the word. That's why the Bible says the word is a light. 
you follow it. It's a lamp, you follow it. It lights your pathways. So when you follow the word, you get to whatever you're looking for. But you know one thing, people don't like the word. A lot of people don't. They like their feelings. Am I telling the truth? A lot of people love their feelings. They will tell you, you don't know how I feel about that. Yes, yeah, thinking feelings, get into trouble all the time. Congratulations. See, a lot of times when we talk to people, they come to me and say, but how did you, how did you know that was what was going to happen? It's called understanding. I understand or stand on the God's perspective on things. Do you know what understanding means? Can I tell you? If you want to know what is holy, that is what they call understanding. Can I give you the scripture? Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10. Read it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. <laughs> I think it's direct enough. The knowledge of holy, if you have understanding, that means you know the holy things. You don't know the holy thing because you wear clothing that look funny. So holy, look at him. Just all in white. But he lacks understanding. And they'll tell you, oh, you don't look like you're born again. You don't look holy. How does the holy look? In their minds, they lack understanding. So the thing, holiness, is a fashion statement that looks like everybody deserted you. The dog and the cat and everybody. You must be really holy now. You've denied the word. Let me tell Can I talk tonight? When the Bible says denying everything, that means when you put the cost of it, it's like nothing. That means you consider everything as worthless. Paul said, I have considered all my great achievement as worthless. When it comes to Jesus, he is number one. Does that make sense? I've considered everything that everybody has given me as an accolade. I have considered it and I have made this estimation. All of those things are rubbish. Now, it's not rubbish, but when I calculate their value, their worth, it is like rubbish. There is nothing more important than the excellency of Jesus in you. Hallelujah. A lot of times, people don't understand this. The Bible says the knowledge of the holy, holy thing is understanding. A lot of people lack the understanding. So when you talk about holiness, they don't know what it means. When you have understanding, you operate in a different dimension, set apart. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. Because this is one of the proofs. A man or a woman that, under, that, that has understanding does not quickly fly off the handle. They are calm in their thinking and their approach. They consider things wisely. But a person that lacks understanding... As you're reading the first verse of a little thing, they start criticizing it. But a man that has understanding or under, that, that has a knowledge of the holy is slow to speak. Let me give you a scripture. Proverbs 14, verse 29.
He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. Stop. Again. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. That means when people do things, you don't try. Oh, yeah, I want to give them a piece of my mind. You keep doing that, you have no mind left. Pieces of mind. Don't do that. Slow to anger. Great understanding. Is this helping you guys? See, and that's why I, tell, I, I was telling you guys, see, when Solomon wanted God to give him something, he said, what do you want? He said, give me a, an understanding heart, a discerning heart, that I might understand how to judge this greater people. And God says, you didn't ask for this, you didn't ask for that, you didn't ask for yourself, you didn't ask for your enemy's life. A lot of people asking, Lord, kill my enemy. No wonder you're broke. That enemy of yours could be a child of God. Because they don't just see eyes face to face. It does not mean they're the devil. Are you hearing me? He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding. Say, I'm of great understanding. When a man or a woman has understanding, listen to them. They are like life. But a person that lacks understanding, when they talk to you, you're dry. You just want to run. And they're loud and shouting and doing this, but there's no life coming. If, see, when there is understanding, it releases like a spring. You can tell this understanding. When you listen to them, you're watered. Can somebody say amen? I'll give you a scripture. Proverbs 16, verse 22. Read it. Understanding is a wellspring of life. Stop. Again. Understanding is a wellspring of life. Understanding is like a wellspring that is producing, not water, life. So instead of water coming out, when you, when you get, have understanding, it comes out of you. A person that has understanding is always giving life to others. But those that lack understanding always want to produce death. Are you with me today? Are you, are you with me today? The day you don't understand, you don't understand your capacity, is the day you start creating waste. Why are people wasteful? Because they don't know their capacity. They don't understand it. Is this helping anybody here today? Understanding is the wellspring of life. Keep reading. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that has it, but the instruction of fools is folly. That's my point. The instruction of fools, when fools are talking, is foolishness. You think that's self-explanatory? I didn't say it. The Bible said it. You first say, are you calling me a fool? Let the gloves fit. You're guilty. Can I have a big amen? When you see a wise, a, a person that has understanding, you know how you know how you can tell. They're spring of life. They, when they talk, you feel alive. The second thing about them is, they when they begin to talk to you. All you hear is wisdom coming in front of them. They, they will drop wisdom like that. Boom, boom, boom. You'll be like, wow. I want to just hang out here. It's different from what you hear all the time. Everyone grumbling, you know, uh, um, grumbling about why, why the world is so bad. The, do the dog left me. The cat left me. The air left me. I'm breathless. 
<laughs> even, even, even the devil said, please <laughs> cast that person out of me. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> the devil comes to deliverance. <laughs> he said, this one is too much. I can't even possess this one. This one will possess me. The devil is running away from you. <laughs> Some people can't take a joke. They say, well, he's talking about the devil. Uh, yeah, I talk about the devil. He's, he, he's, he's an entity. When I talk about him, he knows I put him in this place. You know, a lot of Christians are so afraid. Oh, I don't want the devil to hear. No, I want him to hear. In fact, I want him to sit down and hear while his hearing is still bleeding. Too much fire. You see, hell, fire, is punishment for the devil. Fire is not punishment for us. We are fire. See, Satan is tormented by fire. His ministers are flames of fire. We torture him every day. So hell is final torture. Right now, we're still torturing, we're still fire. Whenever he sees fire, he, remind, he reminds him of hell. Your fire. The Bible says he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and what? Fire, not with blankets. <laughs> Some people, you get a little fire for God, they say, oh no, this one is too hot. Let's go. Dows it with some water. Am I telling the truth? The thing about this, let's look at Proverbs 17, verse 24 quickly. Everybody say understanding. Say understanding. The day you, you have a clear, a clear picture of what understanding is, something begins to happen in you. People have wisdom, but lack understanding. And that's what we're reading, Proverbs chapter 1. It says to perceive the words of understanding. Everybody say perceive the words of understanding. Say, I perceive the words of understanding. You have to perceive. This has to be a perception about understanding. When you have understanding, something begins to happen. Let's read the scripture I just told to open to. Proverbs Wis 17, 24. Wisdom is before him that has understanding. Wisdom is before a person that has understanding. That means, how can you tell a person who has understanding? They're wise. And you can see wherever they go, wisdom is always standing in front to introduce that person. You don't have to know how, how great the person is. When they open their mouth, wisdom just starts dropping. Keep reading. But the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. Read it again. But the eyes of a fool are in the ends of the earth. Foolish people always, uh, do you know that the eyes of the fool is missing wisdom in front of him? He's looking far away to the ends of the earth, looking for wisdom that's in front. The Bible says a man that has understanding, wisdom stands in front of him. But the eyes of the fool bypasses the wisdom and looks somewhere else because they cannot recognize wisdom. Does that make sense? That's why sometimes when you say some things, it goes over their head. Why does it go over their head? They're saying it's so far away. They don't get it. I hope this is helping you. Everybody say hallelujah. Is this helping you? If you want to have good stuff in your life, how many of you want to have good stuff? If you want to find good stuff, pursue understanding. Yesterday, we were with Solomon, and um, we were doing some things, taking care of some things here. And then, I just decided I want to learn a new uh, app, a new, a new program. And what did I do? I just decided, okay, I'm going to learn CAD. The days when I was doing engineering, we didn't have CAD. We just, <laughs> we drew everything, <laughs> T-square, set-square, everything, you know. We had everything done the hard way. We didn't have the computers to go pull things, draw, draw. I've never had time to really study those things. Five minutes it took me, and I knew, and I already built a house. I designed a house and everything, and the line and everything. It looks absolutely beautiful, doesn't it? Very nice. It took me 15 minutes to build that house, to, to design everything for the house. 15 minutes. 
And that's why what people pay thousands of dollars for. Boy, I'm going to start business. 15 minutes, I, I drew a whole plan and I drew the, the different um, um, elevations and uh, the different perspective. You can move the house in all directions. It has roof, all kinds of things, swimming pool, everything. It has palm tree. Glory. Got to have some palm trees. By fire, by force. Palm trees. It took, <laughs> it took me 15 minutes. I just started it and it was done. Because I pursue understanding. I keep understanding with me. And I said, listen, I, gotta, I, I have to learn how this thing is done. And it was done. And the same thing with CAD when it comes to engineering design. I can just design anything I want. Why? It's not something so great. If you have understanding, you would unlock it. A person of understanding can come to a situation. I don't have to be a medical doctor, but I can tell you what the doctors are looking for. That's what you have as a difference between you and others that are being doctors. You have understanding. For them, they're looking at books. You go beyond the books and you can see the author of life flowing through you. You have understanding. You're a different kind of doctor. When everybody else is trying to tell you, oh, this is what you're going to do. You just said, now, I know this is what it says. I understand what you know. But can I show you what you don't know? This is how it's done. And they do it, boom, you always get it right. They said, my God, how, what do you know? I have understanding. I understand. This is what you learned. And I have a better understanding. I told you that all kinds of understanding. The Bible says, the eyes of your understanding being flooded. Your eyes, your understanding has eyes. That means eyes without light is still darkness. So your understanding needs Illumination. Everybody say illumination. Say illumination. The Bible says in the day when you were first illuminated. The day you were first illuminated. That meant you began to get understanding. The knowledge of the holy. God is holy. And the day that light came and your eyes of understanding opened to see. The holy things. It's no longer a strange phenomena to see the blind eyes open. You have understanding. Are you, are you, are you with me? How is the volume? Somebody says increase volume to help her hear this. Thank you. Okay. We want to make sure the volume is up. Everybody say Hallelujah. Proverbs 19, verse 8. He that getteth wisdom loves his own soul. Stop. Read it again. He that gets wisdom loves his own soul. Read it again. He that gets wisdom loves his own soul. People that hate wisdom hate themselves. Because you, what you're doing is you're signing and volunteering for suffering and pain. But if you love yourself, you will love wisdom. Keep reading. He that keeps understanding shall find good. When you keep understanding, understanding will move you from just having wisdom. You start finding the good stuff coming to you. Good would locate you. Everybody say good locates me one of the things we've been doing lately is buying unique things it's unique things unique furniture unique this why good things come to us others just get stuff we get the best and you're going to get the best too can i have a big amen this is helping you, you guys now hear this Hallelujah. Proverbs 24 verse 3. Through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established. By wisdom, you build a house. 
understanding establishes it. When there's an establishment, it is unmovable. Keep reading. Verse 4. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. When you add knowledge, the chambers are filled. In other words, that part that says by knowledge, that means by updating what you know. Keep your faith fresh. A lot of people's faith is so stale. All they think about is what happened 10 years ago. You've got to update your faith. You've got to update your knowledge. Can somebody say amen? No wonder the Bible says, Isaiah 11, 2, it says, The spirit of wisdom and the, uh, shall rest upon him. It says, The spirit of wisdom and understanding shall rest upon him. Can somebody say amen? The thing about God's understanding, you can't search it. People say, I'm trying to understand God. No. You, don't, you cannot understand him. How can you understand something that has no limit and your mind is limited? No beginning, no end. Limitless. There is no searching his understanding. Isaiah says that. Isaiah 40 verse 28. I love that. Read it. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator, the ends of the earth, faints not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. There is no searching his understanding. You can't search it. He does not get tired. And you're trying to understand why doesn't God get tired. You can't search that understanding of why he doesn't get tired. But do you know that if you have the spirit of understanding, you know it. Because understanding is a spirit. Can I have a big amen? Can I have a big amen? Say, I know it. Say, I know it. Keep reading that scripture. Yes. He gives power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. He gives power to the faint. How does he give power to the faint? And it says the next line, the, and today. Even the youth shall. No, go, go. He gives power to the what? He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. He increases the strength of those that have no might. How? It tells you, keep reading, it will go to that, that area. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. Even the young ones that think they are strong, they shall get tired, they shall faint, and they shall get weary. Keep reading, now it is the kicker. Go ahead. And the young men shall, shall utterly fall. That's right. But they that wait upon the Lord. But those that wait upon the Lord. Shall renew their strength. It didn't say the young ones. It says anybody, the young or the old, the male or the female, anyone that understands what it means to wait on the Lord, he will have strength and never get tired. Why is that certain people are just energized all the time and you, they have tougher schedules than other people, but they look fresh all the time? Stop looking at me. See Pastor David is on. <laughs> Dave does. Now, let me explain to you. The reason is because we have found the secret. What it means to wait on him. Now, of course, I've told you waiting on the Lord is not, oh, I'm just, I'm just here waiting on the Lord. 
just waiting on the Lord. In the altar, I'll wait on the Lord. Oh, Lord, I'm waiting. Hmm. Then you look at your watch, two minutes. Lord, I'm waiting. <laughs> you pray a little bit. Oh, Lord. Shaka, shaka, shaka. Oh, Lord. It's two and a half minutes. Our time is not moving. <laughs> Lord, I'm waiting. They said I should wait on you. The lack of understanding. Because they don't understand. Waiting. Remember those days with, when people didn't understand what it was and were teaching like 30 years ago. And I was telling them, waiting on the Lord. This is over 30 years ago. Because people used to say, waiting on the Lord is so tarry and wait. Tarry. You know the tarry nights? Let's tarry. Church people have funny language. We have the tarry nights. Let's, let's make sure we keep that straight. Listen to me. We are waiting for the Lord. As if God is on vacation. I'm waiting. Lord, please come. That word, it's very simple. To wait on the Lord is to be attentive to his directions and commands to go and do. Like a waiter in a restaurant, he says, okay, your wish is my command. What can I do, my Lord? And he gives the directives immediately, and you go and do it. The more you are in obedience to the, the commands of the Lord, the more your strength is renewed, because as you are serving with joy, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of being a waiter in his presence to carry out his desires on earth. Your strength is renewed. Before you realize it, you're looking younger. Your body's getting stronger. And people around you are wondering, what's the secret? You're not sitting there talking to nobody. You are obeying God every moment with joy. Are you hearing me? It's not sitting there and waiting. If God says, go here, you just get up and go. It's not, Lord, what do you mean like go? Go, go. You don't argue, just go. Do it with joy. If you want to be a fool, be a fool for Christ. Just get out there and do it. Wait on the Lord. In all the words, just serve him. The way you serve him is when you serve people. When you serve those around you, your brothers and your sisters, you serve the vision of the kingdom. You want to serve your man and woman of God. You want to serve those that are coming behind you. You just serve people. Just serve. Can somebody say amen? Obey to do. But religious people say, oh, I'm just waiting on the Lord eight years later. I'm waiting on the Lord. You're up in the mountain, the snow and everything is falling in you. Oh, I'm just waiting. Face is crinkling over. I'm waiting. Grow long beards after 12 years. You come down, I'm still waiting. I, I'm tired just listening to you waiting. What happened to God? God disappeared on you. Twelve years later, up on the mountain, I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm going to go on the mountain and wait on the Lord. Listen to me. God is not on the mountain. If it's not in the valley, he's not on the mountain. God's address is not Mount Sinai. <laughs> God's address is not the cathedral. God's address is you. Wherever you are is the mountaintop. I just want you to know that. People want to go to the mountain. We are it. Why? We are seated far above. We are higher than mountains. In the heavenly, beyond mountains. So, but, you know, we have to, let me tell you, you can go to all the mountain you want. If you have, if you lack understanding, you're in trouble. And I love you too. Everybody say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Matthew 15. 
Verse 16. Is this helping you guys? And Jesus said, are you also yet without understanding? Read verse 14. Uh, go 14, 15, 16. Let them alone. They are blind. Um, uh, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. Mm -hmm. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Mm -hmm. Then answered Peter and said unto him, declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, are ye also yet without understanding? Now, this guys had heard Jesus teach a parable, and they missed it like everybody else. Mm -hmm. That means because you heard a sermon does not mean you understood it. Ask some people. Somebody preach, and the Lord. Ah. You just, all they just said is the Lord. But if you say, ah, and sweat, and do this, then you get the excitement, and the people are jumping. The enemy is defeated. You know, we talk like that and we, we're bouncing. Wow, this. End of service. What did he say? I don't know, but it was good. What did he preach? I don't know. Just good. It was powerful. What did, what did you learn? I, learned? I learned Jesus is Lord. Well, I can say that in a very soft way. It's okay. I like get excited sometimes. But guess what? Impart some understanding. Impart some understanding. Don't just make a lot of noise. You know, we preachers sometimes are just glorified noisemakers. You know, we yell and scream at everybody. Spit flying everywhere. Do you know why preachers yell and scream? <laughs> Spit flying, it's true. I mean, some people fall under the power. <laughs> okay, now let's move on. So, Do you know why preachers yell? Can I tell why we yell? Because in those days, they had no microphone and no amplifier. So we had to yell to, for the crowd to hear. And then they invented something called the amplifier. And we kept yelling because we thought that's how you do it. And the Lord says to me, <laughs> hey, see your reaction? That's why I talk gently, you know. Ning, Ning wrote, why did they yell? Uh, that was, <laughs> Ning, okay, that was before the, 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 they actually invented amplifiers. Before they had all this electricity and all those things, preachers used, to, Jesus understood amplification. That's why he got the boat and pushed it into the, a bit to the sea and spoke to the crowd so the voice would bounce off. The water surface and is amplified. That's what he was doing. Hallelujah. I lived out on the beach, grew up on the beach, so I know exactly how that is. We yell across a mile away and we see here each other. Now you don't yell too much because the water will carry it easily. There's nothing blocking it. Can somebody say amen? we preachers are just always yelling at everybody. You don't like somebody yell. You like them you yell. Hallelujah. <laughs> I like that. You know the Lord loves you. Okay, I know, I know, I know. What they meant to say is, the Lord loves you. Now it's clear. But with a microphone, please calm down. Hallelujah. I get excited sometimes. You're not supposed to agree. <laughs> Ning is so fun. I'm reading your text. Ning said, I was not raised in the church. Thank you for the history lesson. <laughs> okay. We have to keep the decorum of the place. Not a chance. <laughs> Luke 22, verse 47. Luke chapter 2, verse 47. They were astonished at his understanding. There were two men going to Emmaus. They listened to Jesus. He is their pastor. Now, can you, Sarah, can you imagine this? I 
I'm walking with you and you don't know me. He, the first thing is, you should know me. I'm your apostle. You should know. The same thing, if I start talking and walking, you can tell my voice, the way I walk and everything. And this were two men, Jesus' disciples, the Bible said, walking with Jesus. And Jesus said, what are you guys talking about? He said, didn't you hear what happened? About Jesus, a man that God was using mightily. How this and this happened, and the wicked hands killed him and this. They're telling the story. He said, really? Their pastor was walking with them. They couldn't recognize him. Do you know why? Somebody can be close to you and you still don't get it. There's a problem right there. Somebody, you go and eat with a person. Can you imagine we're all hanging out and we go and eat with people and still we don't recognize them in the spirit? In the physical either? Let's look at that scripture. Are you ready? Is this helping you guys? 247. Let's go to Luke 24, 45. After, if you go to verse, let's go to verse 40 and read from there. Luke. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy, and while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of an honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. Stop. Write this down. God is not known by how he looks. He is known by what he does. You don't know God because he looks like this. I've heard some people say to me, oh, God looked like this. Listen. I always smile. I say, listen. God looks like me. Are you with me? Here is Jesus coming to his disciples and he's just been raised from the dead. And the first thing he said to them was, hey guys, you got food? You think he would say something really profound like, I am the Lord. I am the great I am. I'm about to be ascended into heaven right now. Don't touch me. I'm the Holy One. No. Read it again. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye have any meat? Do you have any food? Keep reading. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. Why? Let me explain to you why. Spirits don't eat fish. To prove that he is the same one that walked with them. He say, it didn't say like it was his ghost that came and Jesus was in the spirit. He had this heavenly body that does not eat food. He was hungry. If it's heavenly body, you don't, you don't worry about food in heaven. He had the same body, but full of fire. It was God fully enveloped him. Keep reading. And of a honeycomb. Mm -hmm. And he took it and did eat before them. Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spoke unto you while I was yet with you, mm -hmm. that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Mm -hmm. Then opened he their understanding that they might uh -huh. understand the scriptures. Opened he their understanding, but they had the word before. This is what I told you before. How come they didn't get it? Because their understanding was not open. Why did Paul pray that God would give the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him? That your eyes of understanding being enlightened. Because you can have wisdom and revelation without your understanding being open. Everything is closed. It's a closed book. You're not initiated into the mysteries that is revealed. This is helping you. Hallelujah. So a lot of times when you are dealing with people, the biggest problem is not anything to do with whether they know the word of God. It's whether they have the understanding of the word of God. 
Because those that have the understanding, number one, they produce what they say. They can demonstrate it. They can produce it. That's the first thing with a man of understanding. He can reproduce what they say. Write it down. He can reproduce what he's saying. Number two, a man of understanding always works in excellence. People that lack understanding always settle for mediocrity. Are you with me? Because their understanding of those that are in the world has been darkened. There's no light in it. So the first thing is they can produce. Number two, they, they exhibit excellence. Number three, those that have understanding, one of the key things you find is they can impart what they know. If you listen to a person and when you are done listening to them and you say, wow, he's a great preacher, he's a great speaker, but you cannot do what they just told you, something is missing. They lack understanding. A man that has understanding, when they speak to you, they impart to you. So number three, a person of understanding can impart the same wisdom. They can impart because they understand the wisdom they're imparting. They can take it apart in all directions and put it to you. And that was what I did yesterday. After I learned how to do that, I just showed Solomon in less than five minutes, right, Solomon? Less than five minutes how to do the same thing. Instead of reading manuals and manuals, I just five minutes said, hey, do this, do this, do this, we're done. And that's what people go spend money in school. Solomon, you owe me. MIT is 50. Part time. So number three, they impart what they know. A man of understanding can impart. Say impartation. Say impartation. Say impartation. Number four. A man of understanding always produces increase. Everybody say increase. Say increase. A person that has understanding knows how to increase what is put in their hands. They will take a small thing and build even with a small group. They just build, impact more. They know how to increase. Number five, a man of understanding always finds favor. A man of understanding, a woman of understanding always finds favor because everybody that comes to them gets a solution. They are solution providers. The Bible talked about Joseph. He understood. How to interpret dreams. He understood. He didn't just interpret dreams. He knew the mechanisms of how dreams are interpreted. So he can interpret it correctly. When you understand how something is made, you can create the same. Is this helping you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Is this helping you? Should I give you two more? You like my numbers? Those of you online, should I give you two more? And I think they said no. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Hallelujah. You find favor, number five. Number six. People of understanding, they know how to protect. They know how to protect. 
what they impart to others. They guard it. That means when they have understanding and they see you going the wrong way, they want to correct it immediately. Why? They want to preserve your destiny. They want to preserve what's inside of you. A person, of, a person that just has wisdom can just tell and, and walk away. But a person of understanding comes back and says, listen, don't do it this way. You're going to end up this way. Just keep consistency. They watch over you to make sure you are, because they want to preserve what they've invested in you. Are you, are you listening to me? Does that make sense to you? If I have given you something that is treasure, I know it's treasure. Do you think I'll be comfortable watching you mess up that treasure? No. Because I have understanding of the value of what it's going to do in your life, I will tell you, hold on to it. Keep it. It will preserve you. It will keep you alive. Keep that understanding. It will preserve you. It will preserve you. I come back to you and I repeat the same thing. I said, listen, you don't lose sight of what I'm telling you. Soon you're going to get a hold of it. And as you're listening, why? I want to preserve what I have imparted. I don't waste it. This is helping you guys. Number seven. A person of understanding, they, ought, they know, first of all, they have wisdom and they have discretion and they have knowledge. They know how to discern. A person of understanding can discern moments. A person of understanding can discern time. A person of understanding can discern people. He can discern good and evil. A person of understanding, they can discern the times we're living in. And they will tell you, when everybody's saying, slow down, they said, let's build fast. A person of understanding could tell you, listen, this is a target. We are moving in this direction. Everyone is going at this pace. Let's change our pace. A person of understanding, they, under, they, they discern moments, they discern people, they discern opportunities. So, when you have understanding, your discerning becomes sharper. You don't waste your time. When people come play around with you, what do you do? You just tell them, listen, I don't have time for this. Time becomes your currency. Can somebody say amen? Has this helped you tonight? Has this helped you tonight? If it has, come on, let's clap our hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chris says, she doesn't want me to stop. Sweetie, we got to sleep. It is 11 o'clock. But we're here for you. Hallelujah. I'll be back next week. We're continuing the series on understanding. How many of you like that? Can I have a big amen? Because I want you guys to be loaded. I want you guys to win every single day. Every single day. And I'm going to speak to you. Your strength is renewed like an eagle. I say your strength is renewed like an eagle. I speak to your body. Every cell in your body. It be quickened now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I decree that everything that has been holding any stress, any tiredness, any uh, uh, being, uh, being, being very, very lax about some things, I speak it be quickened in your spirit now. You come alive in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I speak and I cause your body to be quickened by the word you've heard tonight. That your hearing, your understanding be flooded with light for you to see the wonderful things, the hope that God has for calling you. Be enlarged in the spirit. Be enlarged in the, in the spirit, in the borders of your spirit of the heart. In the name of Jesus, let your capacity increase in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
in Jesus' name. I decree that fear is broken from you now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's a new day. It's a new opportunity. It's something new happening now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, your body is being quickened. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I speak strength to your body now in the name of Jesus. The next couple of days will become a day, become days of refreshment and days of a quick restart, a reset. And you're moving to the top now. In the name of Jesus, I pray. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And the people say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands and celebrate Jesus. What, what we're going to do now, we're going to give, this is Wednesday night, we receive our tithes and offering for the embassy, and I want to make sure we give you an opportunity to release an uncommon seed. This word has come to you, you're a man, a woman of understanding, and you know what the principles of the kingdom is all about. The Bible says, when you give, it shall be given unto you. The Bible has spoken concerning the, the, the seed in your hand. It's only good if it's released and planted into the good soil, and I believe that this place is good soil. Hallelujah. You want to go to Christlove.org and you're going to click the donate button and you can sow a seat there tonight. Immediately. Do it while the ground has been tilled, while the ground is very fresh, while you've heard the word fresh. You want to go release your seed. And when you release that seed, give that seed an assignment. Tell what that seed should produce. You see, when you sow your seed, your money, it's simple, a medium of exchange. Believe God for something big, something wonderful to happen in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You can also go to paypal.me forward slash Charles and Devon. Hallelujah. And you can sow your seeds there. We have the cash app, the dollar sign, and Charles and Devon, and you can sow your seed there too. Amen. And if you want to send a check or money order, you can send it to Christ Love Media, P.O. Box 72800. Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. Amen. I want to pray that God will keep you and he will cause you to always shine. In the name of Jesus, everybody say, amen and amen. And for those of us here, we're going to receive our tithes and offering. I want to say, you just go and shine every single moment. God bless you. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. That's wonderful.